Hey Sci-Fi fans, this is Chris at Sci-Fi Review, and in this installment, I'm going to talk about the AMC series Preacher. Stay tuned. So AMC's series, just called Preacher, ran for four seasons starting in 2016, and it was the brainchild of Seth Rogen, which should clue you in immediately to what you're going to be in for. If I had to pick four words to describe this series, five words, let's go five words. No, come in again. I'll come in again. Five words. Um, weren't expecting that, were you? Five words. Absurd, hilarious, violent, blasphemous, and just plain awesome. Okay, so here's, here's, here's the deal. There's this preacher guy named Jesse Custer who has gone back to his, I guess his hometown somewhere in West Texas, we're left to assume. It's in Texas somewhere, you know, whatever. He takes over his dad's old church and this thing is out there, this entity is out there possessing people and making them, poof, explode because none of the vessels are capable of holding them including Tom Cruise, who was in charge of Scientology, that tries to possess him, and kaboom, he explodes in, in front of millions of people. It was kind of awesome. Um, but it finally gets to Jesse Custer, possesses him, and he doesn't explode. So now he has this thing called Genesis inside of him, which is basically a power that lets him command anybody to do anything he wants. Now, we come to find out that this thing is escaped from a box kept by a couple of angels named Fiore and LeBlanc, and let's just get this out of the way. Everything I'm going to describe to you seems weird and absurd and silly and really crazy, and what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, believe me, I know. When you watch all four seasons of it, though, you'll get it. So Fiore and LeBlanc are now trying to get back this Genesis thing from Custer, and See, they're based, they're angels, see, so they're, they're immortal, but their bodies can die, and then they, like, re regenerate a short distance away, which makes for several endless bloodbath fights where they're just getting killed left and right and killing other angels or demons or whatever, and the same thing happens. So they'll die, and then whoop, flashlight, and they can rush them back in. Yeah, it, trust, absurd. It's absurd and violent and hilarious. Like I said, come on. So, come to find out, God wants this thing back. God really, no, God doesn't want this back because God's taking a vacation, right? He's hired some guy named Mark Harlick, which is actually the actor's name, which I thought was f***ing hilarious, to be honest, to, to play him because he looks like him, I guess, is like a dead ringer for God, this Harlick character, who's actually named Mark Harlick. And so the angels are trying to get this thing put back in the box, and Custer figures out he can use this, and he starts using this power for... I do stuff around the town, you know, you do the, the guy who runs the local power plant slash slaughterhouse, he makes him come to church and do things, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff that happens, I'm not going to run down every single thing that happens, or this video would be two hours long, trust me, um, so who else is here, oh, you've got Jesse Custer, for one, you've got his girlfriend, who was a former partner in their criminal enterprise named Tulip O'Hare, drives a 72 Chevelle, she calls it an SS, but it's not, it's a four-door, I mean, come on, we know, um, there's a vampire who literally falls out of the sky into this West Texas town named Pronchus Cassidy, who's Irish vampire, which makes it even more funny because he got this accent going on the entire time. You've got the local naive kid who we find out blew half his face off. I'm not going to spoil why or what, but he's got this mouth. You'll, if, you'll see it in the thing here. And he's basically this naive kid who's not real fast up top, but he, you know, got a good heart, all that stuff. We got Jesse Custer, we got Tulip O'Hare, we got Cassidy, we got Eugene. We got Fiori and LeBlanc, the two angels. We got God. That's that's just the first season. So, yeah, in the first season, they, they discover God is missing because they figure out, hey, you're not God. They kind of call upon God using Genesis to show himself to the church, and he shows up, and then they go, hey, wait, you're not him. And it's like, oh, yeah, busted. And so then they go looking for him. Plan simple. Find God. God wants our help. We'll help him. If he doesn't, we're going to kick his ass. 
but the town explodes. There's nothing left for them to come back to. Nothing left for Eugene to come back to, which is important because Eugene pissed off Jesse Coaster, who said, Eugene, go to hell. And guess what? He did. So that's going to be important later. Season two, they're on the run from the Saint of Killers, which was a this supernatural guy. He's an old school cowboy with his big, you know, dry drover coat, cowboy hat, big ass guns that nobody but him can fire and blows things up left and right. And he's got a whole backstory there. But the Saint of Killers headed out to to basically take them out. Yeah, you can imagine what happens then. So there's the whole second season is basically them going to New Orleans, which is where they heard, you know, God was hanging out. Turns out he was, which we find out later in the season. God is actually, spoiler alert, God is actually the guy in the dog suit, just so you know. Sorry, I ruined it. Um, Yeah, they, you know, walk the earth getting adventures like Kane and Kung Fu, that type of thing. In New Orleans, which happens to be where a bunch of vampires live, why is why what is it with vampires in New Orleans? I mean, I don't get it. I've been in New Orleans a couple times, just you know, I don't know, I don't whatever. New Orleans, hey, seems to be where all the vampires are. I guess you're a vampire, you go to New Orleans, but apparently that's where God goes to hang out too, is at New Orleans because he likes the beignets at uh, whatever that place was. So yeah, but they go there. Season ends up on a bad note. Beginning of season three, they have to go to Jesse's grandmother, who is some kind of weird voodoo priestess who lives off of the souls she pumps out of other people with this weird little contraption and stuff. And meanwhile, in the heavenly world, there's this other character called Star, who has designs on the apocalypse to install or the, the plan for the apocalypse is to install the offspring of the actual Jesus that has been cloned and manipulated and whatever throughout the centuries. And it's this guy who's a total moron. He's the definition of the village idiot called Humperdew. And, you know, yeah, it's, it, thanks, Seth. Appreciate this. This is awesome stuff. Jesus is still around. He's, you know, he, it's Jesus, right? He's still around. You know that. But Star's got other ideas. He's like, oh, if I could get Genesis, I could take over. And so they put a couple of agents named Featherstone and Hoover on the case. Those two are just funny in their own right. To watch them in New Orleans. I think I got to have I'm switching stuff. Right. This is complex, guys. I'm sorry. I don't have the whole thing memorized and outlined in my head. You know, there's stuff that happens before and after. It's just, it's insane. Okay, then you get, you finally get to... Jesse's grandma, that whole thing, she makes a deal with Satan. Oh, I forgot about Eugene, didn't I? Well, Eugene went straight to hell. He meets, no, no, he gets the cell you know, next to none other than Adolf Hitler. Who then convinces Eugene, oh, we need to escape. He gets out for a brief vacation, ends up back in hell, kills Satan, takes over hell. Cause I mean, who better to run the place, right? And you know, there's lots of little side trips here and there with the Santa killer switching sides, going back, working on his own, like I said, I'm not going to explain every single minutia of detail here. But the last season takes all those three seasons and it just goes, nope, we're going to turn this up to 11 now. When they turn into the new Fast and Furious crew doing this worldwide secret agent super soldier thing where you got them in the Middle East and Australia and whatever else. It's just absolutely nuts. And it winds up with having to track down the real Humper dude who got loosed with all these other clones and then when, when they take the Genesis and try to put him into Humperdew all these fake Humperdews explode because they're not good enough so when it gets to yeah it, it and like I said okay so it's the, the let's get back to those four words I, I start off with the first one is absurd it is so absurd that it every turn you're just like what what is that I don't okay that's cool but you just, it's just stuff you don't expect. You just sit there and you're like, oh, that's wild and cool, and I love it. It's hilarious because they're like, ah, oh, of course, and you're just dying laughing. It's violent as <laughs> Let's just get that right out. There's blood and guts and body parts and whatever else flying around everywhere here all the time. If you're squeamish, you probably shouldn't watch the show. Sorry, guys. There's a lot of that. It's blasphemous. I mean, the way it treats God and Jesus and basically everything. You know, I don't 
I'm not particularly religious, so, but that's, this, this is Seth Rogen. Thank you very much, Seth, for this. It's just like a big middle finger to all of religion everywhere, to be honest. And, you know, the last word is just awesome. It's just freaking hilarious. You know, that they, they, they end up with the, they did, they, they kind of wrap it up in a nice, neat little bow, which to be honest was a letdown. It should have just ended on some big cliff hair and left us all going, how absurd is that? You know, you sit here and listen to me talk about this. You're like, man, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about about this show. It's like, because there's that much stuff going on in this show that you just, I can't wrap it up in a nice neat little bow or it would, I'd have to read off a list in order of everything that happened and that would be just stupid. So, absurd, hilarious, violent, blasphemous, awesome. That's all you need to know. Five words. I'm giving it a four out of five. I'm giving this show a full four out of five. It's just, I thought it was brilliant. Yes, it's low budget. Yes, it's cheesy and silly and violent and blasphemous and a lot of profanity and sex stuff going on. You know, it. Thank you, Seth Rogen and company, for right for coming up with this idea and seeing it all the way through. I appreciate it. This has been Sci-Fi Review.